Laser Records present Footy Favorites, an album with the best 12-man team in the league. Each player singing his own favorite song. You've seen them perform on the ground, now hear them perform in your own home. It doesn't matter who you follow because each club's a winner on Footy Favorites, the album premieres of the year. Brownlow, team captains and players are all featured for the first time. Footy Favorites, available in record stores now. Record or cassette, $8.99. <laughs> yes, as uh, Molly would have said, do yourself a favour and grab one of those. If you can, grab them because they are collector's items. And one man who featured prominently on that particular album and uh, probably broke a few records over the journey, I would have thought, <laughs> joins us now, former Carlton great Mark McClure. G'day, Mark. Hiya, boys. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks for coming on. No, thank you. Bring back very ordinary memories, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I don't know if any of you have actually made a record, but it's not that easy. No, well, clearly not, because we're going to have a listen to you trying to, uh, no. well, let's mm. just say destroying the John Lennon classic, Mark. Have a listen to this. Please. Imagine all <laughs> the people <laughs> living oh, life in peace. What? That's not bad. Very high. That's pretty good. Very high. You may say <laughs> not bad. Yeah, it's alright, it's alright. That's not bad. Were not you bad. pinching your nose when you sang yeah. that? Or? <laughs> um, look, it wasn't my best go, but I thought it was a great song, John Lennon's song. It's, a, it's a one that's going to last forever. Not too many of the other ones are. And when you go through the other ones, I mean, you can go to Kelvin Temple and if you want to. Yeah, what what what? I'm not sorry it? now. We all are sorry now that Kelvin <laughs> sang this. When you ever listen to it, just have a listen. <laughs> Right to the end. Just like a friend. I tried to warn you. Somehow. You had your way. So, Salas, do you remember what the fee was for that? <laughs> you got for doing that? Uh, not much. Um, we had a. Uh, we actually turned up on a Tuesday night after training and. Uh, I walked in and Barry Ram was on his six can of beer and uh, <laughs> had a couple of beers and just relaxed and all of a sudden sang the song and I got, I think I got 500 the first month, 180 the second month and I never saw another check and I understand why. <laughs> but uh, if you look at Kelvin, seriously, a lot of the blokes were pretty good. Barry was pretty good. There was a couple of, couple of guys who were fairly good. Mm. And Sattler's your footy career. You played in a golden era at the Blues, uh, Premiership player in 1979, 81 and 82, showing some vision there of the great Alex Jezelinko holding up the Premiership Cup in one of them. But just one particular memory, was there a great, one of the was there one particular side that was the greatest of all? Um, well, I think that, uh, you know, we had a bunch of kids. One of the things that I was more proud of than anything else is that we didn't win a, a, a Brownlow during that time, no goal-kicking awards, uh, no media awards, no TV awards. Not one person won a thing in that era. So that was a part that I was more proud of. Mark, you had some famous battles within that period with the, the great Collingwood player, Billy Pickin. Uh, was he <laughs> the, the favoured uh, opponent? Oh, look, we had a lot of fun. Um, Billy and I were pretty good mates and uh, we, uh, we sort of uh, tangled every week. And that was the part about that era that you actually played on someone. No one plays on anyone anymore. Mm. So uh, you actually had an opponent. And, and, and I think the 90s for mine was probably the best era that I've ever seen. Uh, it was quick, it was tough. They were more professional. They, they, worked, they didn't work anymore uh, as we had a job in those times. So I think the 90s was the best I came across as, as an era of uh, football to watch. Mark, to see those great Carlton sides and then to watch Carlton play over the last 20 years, what, what's been your biggest frustration with, with their lack of success? Uh, well, it comes down to leadership in, in the end, and we all understand that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we've had... Uh, we had an era that was just extraordinary and it was fun and it was, and it was all about the pillars of society there, which is the Wes Lofts and, and Kevin Hall and the, and the people who came for, and had no money, didn't get paid one cent, but they gave their all to the footy club and, and, and Bugsy Combin and, uh, and Ian Collins and all those sort of guys. I mean, they will be remembered forever for what they did for that footy club. I'm not so certain the paid ones at the moment would be. Sellers, you're a very good player, but you're angry too. You used to get in a few little fights here. We got you fighting with... The great Ooh. Trevor Barker, mate. How could you take him on and give him a whack? Well, well he was pretty small <laughs> and he was weak. <laughs> and what about Mick Gafer, a young Mick Gafer here? You give him one? <laughs> Come on, Sellers. Well, you ever played on Mick Gafer? Yeah, I did. I, I wanted to give him one too, you're right. <laughs> He's like Brian Crowley, just drives you mad. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Salas, we're about to watch some vision of you and Mick Nolan. Unfortunately, you didn't see Mick Nolan standing oh. there when you were running towards him. What happened this day? Well, it was a token chase, and I think you'd be pretty OK <laughs> with that too, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Head down. Uh, well, you're chasing Ross Glenn. Denning had no way. He was uh, five or six yards in front of me, and I thought, well, I'm not going to make any ground. And, I, and actually, it was a... It's been only been shown 750,000 times, that. <laughs> but uh, it is just a token chase. And the coach says, you got to chase? So I chased. And uh, actually, Mick, that's his first shepherd ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's got back to us in here, Sellers, that you reckon we're all happy with ourselves in here, the old Sunday footy show. Is that right? I've seen a few of you talk about yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you reckon? Well, I've watched you kick a goal after the siren about 65 times. <laughs> <laughs> and, Salas, so you actually had a stint in the coach's box with Grant Thomas. Yeah. How did you enjoy that? Uh, that was pretty good. I, I was also with uh, Peter Knights at, at the Brisbane Bears. We started the Brisbane Bears. And I actually... Peter Knight's one is a, a, is a good... It was great because it was we had no players at all. Yeah. We got everyone's cast-offs and uh, all those sorts of things. The other side of it was that we played our first game at uh, the MCG uh, against North Melbourne. And, uh, and won. And I had to carry the board across the ground. And I got across the ground and, and they bought some pretty ordinary stickers to put on there. And I got not one name on the board. It's all fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> um, halfway through the first quarter... or not halfway, five minutes. And he said, who's on who? I said, so-and-so. Who's on who? He goes, oh, this is, you know, range is on him. Oh, no, give us a look at the board. I said, you don't want to look at the board. There's nothing on it. There's nothing on it at all. Well, we won that game, which was quite nice. Our actually, first game ever. Actually, it, it's an amazing uh, piece of footage, that one, Mark, isn't it? Because all the players in the rooms are standing around afterwards with bits of paper to sing the club song because no one knew the words. Oh, that's correct. And uh, we had the, the beautiful colours of... Uh, maroon and yellow, and we had white pants to wear and white shoes, and it was, it was unusual. But uh, it was, let me tell you, it was a very, very good experience. Well, what try was and get it? a bunch of kids up and try yeah. and win a game. You know? And so, so you would have had a fair bit to do with Christopher Scase. What was he like? Fantastic. I love Christopher Scase. He was, he was, uh, he actually asked me about trying to put the, together like a Carltonians type thing or a, a President's Men type thing, and I end up, I end up going to a meeting with him where he had a, uh, had all the actual people who built his, his mirages and all those sorts of things. And he started off with architects. He said, right, who's the architects? There's three of you in the room. Who wants to join? He said, uh, so one puts his hand up, no problems. The other one puts his hand up. The other one didn't. He said, you'll get no work. Next one. Who goes TVs? Who does this? Who does that? He had 50 in one night at 30,000 a head. It was massive money Jesus. in those days. Now, and the uh, power uh, of Christopher's case was enormous. Yeah. Now, uh, look, clearly, uh, judging by the poster behind you, you're still keeping abreast of the game and also uh, <laughs> all things media. Um, we're going to get your... Uh, you're going to get One your of my girlfriends. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to get your reactions to some of the more prominent media people in just a tick. But before we do that, um, how would you get the name Sellers? Uh, clumsy, like uh, Peter Sellers. You ever seen The Party? Yeah. Uh, Peter Sellers' The Party, well, I was a bit clumsy in the younger days. And, ah, uh, right. Oh, and that was how it came on. And it's, yeah, well, I was, you know, well, I live with a guy called Leo Brooks. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's I have. Jason Moran and, yeah. and yep. uh, the Moran brothers' uh, grandfather. Mm. Uh, he was a Carl Carlton guy, and I lived there for years. Michael Fitzpatrick lived there. Mm. A few other guys. Brent Croswell lived there as well. So in in these times, so it's a terrific man, and uh, he's passed <coughs> on now. But uh, he, he he named me. OK. All right, here we go. Rapid-fire questions and uh, maybe some rapid-fire and acidic responses. Thoughts. Uh, thoughts on some of the uh, prominent members of the mm -hmm. Australian football yeah. media. And also people involved with you. So my first one is David Parkin. Uh, great guy. Uh, really good guy. He doesn't drink or smoke, but he's got a couple of problems. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Judd. Uh, Chris Judd. Uh, Mm, was he the best captain ever? I don't know. Oh, who was? Wasn't him. Right. Mm. Eddie Maguire, Mark. I, I like it. I, I really like it. He likes to get his name in the paper, and he he puts his head on TV. And when you're actually in a conversation, when it's hard to talk. <laughs> <laughs> your, your little old mate, Jared Waitley. Uh, he's a pro, yeah. a, a professional. Um, He's, uh, he just works, that's all he does, and I uh, worked with him for 15 years on the mm. ABC. I found him fantastic. Yep. What about our fearless leader, Tony Chumpers Jones? Oh. Well, oh. I'm in the majority. 
So, <laughs> which is... <laughs> He's in the majority. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good on you, Mark. Thanks for that. Sellers, uh, you're all right, Damo. Sellers, have uh, you got on. a second pair of those aqua uh, glasses you got on? Because Damo, he's always been running those black ones. We're trying to sort of, uh, you know, brighten him up a little bit. He's a bit of a glass half full man. Boring. Boring. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, Salas, uh, it's been terrific to catch yes. up with you and uh, <laughs> hopefully we can do it again down the track. Good on you guys. Have a good day. Good on you. Thanks very much. Salas. Great Salas. Mark McClure joining us there.